Okay, we're going to do unit 5B.2. Don't forget what we're doing here. We are looking for roots, solutions, zeros, which all of these mean we're answering the question, where does the parabola cross the x-axis? That's the important thing. That's what we're looking for. Today, we're going to look at zero product property to find is a way to do this. Um, Mr. McGrath loves to call it ZPP. So if you ever see ZPP on a test, we're talking about zero product property. Or if you have them for Algebra 2 Trig, zero product property. Okay, so don't forget that's what we're looking for. That's what all this whole chapter is about. Where does the parabola cross the x-axis? So in order to do zero product property, we have to factor first. And so if you don't know how to factor equations, and a lot of you really weren't quite there, we're going to get some more practice and you need to learn it. I'm going to keep saying it. If you got a lot of those wrong on the test, you need to go make sure you understand how to factor. So here are the steps for factoring and we're going to take it a step further and we're going to go to zero product property. <laughs> so we're building on what we learned. Math builds on the last chapter so if you didn't learn the last chapter this chapter is going to be that much more difficult so ask for some help. The very first thing when you're doing zero product property or factoring is you have to set the equation equal to zero. And so you may have to manipulate or you may have to move things over to the other side to make it equal to zero. That's important. Second, this is where a lot of you got problems wrong on the, on the test. You, for, you need to look for the greatest common factor before you start factoring. Factor off the greatest common factor. And a few of you got those problems wrong on the test. You lost a point or two because you forgot to take the GCF at the very beginning. Step three, we've been doing from day one. A, B, C. Find your A, B, and C. Next, yep, got to use your magic X just like we've been doing, or factor X, whatever you want to call it. Next is choose your adventure, or choose your poison. I like to say choose your adventure. It's more positive. I love those books. And that's what I mean. Now, what I've taught in class and what, miss, what other people have taught, I believe we've taught box and grouping. If you use a different method and you got it approved by us, then that's fine too. That's where you choose your adventure. And then our last step that we're going to take it a step further this time is we're going to do zero product property. Okay, so really steps one through five we've already done. We're taking it one step further. And so you have to know how to do step one through five. I'm not going to spend a lot of time. I will on the first couple make sure that we remember. All right, so let's do some examples. I'm going to do three examples like I always do. Well, I don't always, but lately that seems to be the pattern. That could change though. All right, first example. And again, we're trying to figure out if I, if I don't graph this parabola, where does this parabola cross the x-axis? So let's look at the first one, x squared plus 5x plus 6. And it is already equal to 0. So step 1, is it equal to 0? Yes. Step 2. So step 1, we're good. Step 2, GCF. What goes into 1, 5, and 6? In this case, it's 1, so there's nothing going to change. Step three, A equals one, B equals five, and C equals six. I'm still seeing people mess that up, so you need to keep practicing. Step four, magic X time. Up here goes A times C, so that's six. Down here goes B. We're looking for two numbers that multiply to six and add to five. In this case, it's two and three. And then I added a little step to the magic X in my class because people are messing this up. When we do this, X magically appears on both of these because we need them. Okay, I'm going to do both box and, so I'm going to go down this time. I'm going to do box and grouping. So now it's time to choose your adventure. So if we were doing box, and some of you still need to practice this. Top left hand is your first term. Our first term in this was X squared. Bottom right is our last term. So I got it from up here. Here's my first term, x squared, and my last term is plus 6. And so I'm putting them in the box. The blanks in the middle 
come from our magic x. So that's 2x and 3x. So we're going to take our GCF from the top row, that's an x. A GCF from the second row, that's a 3. A GCF from the first column and a GCF from the first, second column. And so our factors are x plus 3 and x plus 2. For boxers, that's how you would do it. For groupers, it's x squared plus 5x plus 6. Remember, we split this. x squared goes first and, and 6 stays. We split that middle term and we have to split it specifically the way we did it in the magic x. So that's going to be my 2x and my 3x. I get that from my magic x. Let's look at our groups. And I am moving fast on this because I already taught you this. And so if you really need it slower, you can slow down or you can go back and do the video where I introduce this. So in this first group, I'm going to divide by x. So what does that give me? x on the outside and x plus 2 is left on the inside. Okay. In the second group, I can divide by 3. So that puts a 3 outside and an x plus 2 on the inside. Do our chunks match? Yes, they do, x plus 2. So we write down our chunk and we let write down our leftover, x plus 3. And now we have to do our final step. Before this was our last step, but this is no longer the last step. If I'm asking for zero roots, zero product, or the, where it crosses the x-axis, we have to go one step further to zero prop, product property. And this is what we're going to do. Remember that in the beginning, this was equal to x. So we're going to take our two factors. It doesn't matter the order that we just got from our method. Whichever order you have is fine. And we're going to continue seeing them as equal to zero. Because again, if it's equal to zero, that's where we're crossing the x-axis because that, that means y is zero. So if y is zero, we're crossing the x-axis. And here's what you have to do. You have to split it into two little problems where they equal zero. So x plus three equals zero and x plus two equals zero. And so we subtract three from both sides here to figure out what x equals. So x equals negative three or minus two from both sides, I should say and, and x equals negative two. The zero product property says when you multiply two things together, here's what it says, and I'm just gonna give you this so you kind of have an idea where this is coming from. And so this is our final answer for this problem, but I want you to see what the zero product property says. It basically says when you multiply two numbers, let's call them a and b, and you get zero, then either a has to equal zero or b has to equal zero. So therefore, we have to set them both equal to zero. Okay, because think about what, how to get a zero as an answer. One of them has to be zero or both of them. Okay, so zero product property is basically saying they both have to equal zero at some point. So let's use that to solve them. Okay, so that's the simple zero product property explanation. Let's do another problem. Number two, 3x squared equals negative 14x minus 8. This is in all kinds of wrong form. If you start your ABC from here, you're in trouble. You need to do the first step, and that is to get it equal to 0. Right now, we don't have 0 on one side of the equation. I am going to, I don't like my lead term to be negative. That confuses me when I go to factor. So I'm just going to add 14x to both sides. So now I have 3x squared plus 14x equals negative 8. Whoops, I forgot my x. And then I'm going to add 8 to both sides. Now you could do this in one step. I'm just showing it the whole step. So now I have 3x squared plus 14x plus 8 equals 0. Now I'm in the right form, and I really don't like my lead term to be z negative, so I make sure I do it in such a way that that doesn't happen. Oh, next step, step two, is going to be GCF. Let's look at our GCF. I almost forgot GCF. It's important to always check for that. Is there anything that goes into 3, 14, and 8 besides 1? Nope, so this is where we're stuck. So th step three is your A equals 3, B equals 14, and C equals 8. Magic X time. So this is 24 up here because it's a times c and this is b which is 14 and i got 12 and 2.
Okay. Next step is going to be choose your method. And I'm not actually going to do it this time. Um, you need to do this now. I would pause the video right now. And if you can't do step five, you need to get some help, whether it's through the video, with a parent, ask Miss Sally, ask myself, ask Mr. McGrath, Mr. Wells. You need to figure out how to do this step. Once I've done this step, here are the factors I got. I got x plus 4 and 3x plus 2. So if you didn't get these answers, you need to go back and figure out what you did wrong. And then step 6 is zero product property. So how do I do zero product property? I take the, the factors together and I equal them to zero, which means the first group has to equal zero and the second group has to equal zero. So we're going to split it up x plus 4 equals 0, and 3x plus 2 equals 0. The first place this parabola is crossing the x-axis is where x is negative 4. The second place this is crossing is going to be at a fraction. That's okay. That's going to happen. And that's going to be at negative 2 thirds. So how do I write my answer? The shortest way is to do negative 4, negative 2 thirds. That is where my parabola is crossing the x-axis. Let's do one more. For those of you who need one more example, number 3. 10x squared plus 5x equals 5. Again, first step. This is not equal to 0. This one's a little simpler than last time. We just need to move that 5 over. So I'm going to subtract 5 from both sides. You can't do 5x minus 5. I see people doing that. You can't do that. If there's an x attached, you can't subtract that with a plain old number. That's not okay. So let's write this down. It's 5x minus 5 because five, that 5 can't go with 5x. They're not the same. GCF. This time I made it so there was a GCF. And the GCF in this case is 5. So we can divide everything by 5. We'd have to divide the other side by 5 too, but that's 0 divided by 5. So I have a 5 on the outside, and that leaves me 2x squared plus x minus 1. And again, I see a lot of people wandering back to that top one to use for your A, B, and C. Don't do that. This is the whole point. So step three is to do our A, B, C from our factored form once we took out the GCF. And so that's going to be 2, 1, and negative 1. We're going to do our magic X, and that's going to be 2 and negative 1. So you might want to pause this because I'm going to start moving fast. Step five is choose your method. And you need to pause this right now and do it and see if you can get it. Okay, and the factors when you do this correctly are going to be 2x plus 1 times x plus 1. Now our last step is what I taught you today. Your zero product property or ZPP You're going to set this back equal to zero, your factors back equal to zero, because that's what it was originally before we factored. Remember, factoring is unfoiling, so it means the same as what we had at our first step. And we're going to split them up. Now, we do have a 5 out here from our GCF, but that's not going to give us a solution because 5 doesn't have an x on it. So we can just leave that off for now. 2x plus 1 equals 0. x plus 1 equals 0. I subtract 1 from both sides. 2x equals negative 1, subtract 1, subtract 1. x equals negative 1 over here, so we know our first solution. We're not done with this one. I don't know why I switched over and started that one. So x equals negative 1 half. Here's my second solution. You can write it like that or as a number set. I do want to show you one more example, and this is one you'll see on the test. Let's say I've already factored it, and I just asked for a solution, and it looks like this. We can split this up. This means x times x plus 2. So it's going to be x equals 0, and then x plus 2 equals 0. So that case means our answer is 0, negative 2. This parabola crosses at 0 and negative 2. So you're going to see one very similar to that on the test. I hope it's not the exact one. It could be. So those of you who watched and paid attention, this would be a good one to see because you're going to see it on the test.